Hey there, my name is Orest, I am from Ukraine, however now I am in Croatia. Please don't get me wrong, I am not running away from the war, actually quite the opposite. Uh, I am uh, visiting a few events here, uh, doing the representation of our country all around the world. And this is one of the largest conferences for digital nomads in the world. If you don't know, digital nomads are a group of people, kind of like a movement which is now uh, picking up much, much faster of, of, of the folks who really benefit from freedom of movement around the world, from some kind of like different uh, types of uh, remote work, or online entrepreneurship and everything alike. Being a digital nomad myself for the last 10 years, I am a big fan of this kind of lifestyle. I visited over 100 countries around the world so far, but at one moment everything have changed. I came back from my travels to participate in the uh, war of Ukraine to contribute towards our resistance in many different manners. One of them is media representation. One of them is spreading the message from Ukraine to my global audience and I'm super grateful that you're watching this channel. If you didn't subscribe before, please do it so and we'll carry on. I am Orest, like for it without F from Ukraine and my mission is to create awareness about the situation in our country so if you are interested to go deeper I'll be happy to do the podcast other kind of stuff uh, to message it for your audience and from my side I have the audience of over 100,000 people so I'll be able to support Yoshin initiatives as well so let's do the such kind of collab our event is happening in the beautiful historical village of Primosten Actually, this is a very symbolic place for me because just in 2014 I visited this place and actually have a picture from the opposite side of this peninsula. Also, I must say that there are many things in common between Croatia and Ukraine because uh, not long time ago, just over then two decades, Croatia also was fighting for its independence. And currently Ukraine is receiving a lot of support from this amazing, by the way, also a Slavic country. The coastal part of Croatia, the area we are now, uh, has a name of historical cultural area of Dalmatia. And what a coincidence, the flag of Dalmatia is actually the copy of Ukrainian flag or vice versa, which means blue and yellow. But this is not the end of list of things that are common between Ukraine and Croatia. Just for you to know that the medieval tribe of white Croats, which actually planted the seed for the modern nation of Croatia, had its heartland in present days of Western Ukraine. And their capital was founded not far from my native city Lviv. So definitely being here in Croatia feels like almost a second homeland to me or at least the culture and people are very, very similar and I feel here very comfortable. So please give a huge applause for the founder of the project, Johannes. Meet the organizer and the founder of Nomad Base, Johannes. Hello. It's... High five. Nice to meet you. you Hello. See, there, there is even this uh, written over here. So can you tell us please a few words about the event, what's happening down here? So we're meeting here in Croatia with 270 nomads, uh, people from all around the world to share skills, to share, yeah, have good times as well. And uh, basically we're uh, staying here at this hotel for one week. And um, then a lot of us are continuing to travel in the area as well, not just Croatia, but also uh, other uh, areas close by. So people know each other for a very long time, um, half of them, and then there's a lot of new people as well. So um, yeah, it's for everyone who works remotely and wants to find some kind of community that meets in many places around the world. That's amazing. Uh, I'm really glad to be here, right? And it, uh 
tells a lot that you invited me here uh, not simply to talk about the nomad life that we both share for the last uh, at least a decade, but also that uh, you are able to shift the focus of uh, the entire community a little bit towards the Ukrainian question, which might sound like uh, very personal to people from mm. Ukraine, but it's also very important that the entire global society of nomads who are visioners in more sense, yes, also don't stay away from it, but participate. And mm. uh, uh, the fact uh, with the charity invitation dinner is amazing. So I'm super, super interested. What will be the outcome of this? Yes, I'm too. And we are always very, very happy to support Ukrainian projects. And we will also continue to do this in the future. Um, I personally love the Ukraine. I think it's an amazing country. Spent a lot of time there. So I uh, know a lot of people who are, were affected by this and um, we want to make sure we support this from our the nomad based community. Amazing. Well. Let's do it. Yeah. Good luck. Great Good luck. event. Thanks. And from my side, yes, just want to give you a bullet point what you can do in this situation. So first of all, it's important to understand that number one necessity is like supporting the army. I understand also that there are people who like, uh, I'm not really sure about, uh, you know, providing military support, what else can I do? So the second step, choose the project which resonates to you. Children, food, logistics, youth, mothers with small children. There are so many things to do, you know? There's, uh, Use your superpower, like use, I don't ask you to sacrifice something. Uh, continue doing what you're already doing, but shift it a little bit to support the Ukrainian matter. For example, uh, Jordan, you are in the, um, you, you, you are in the like, uh, get the remote work stuff. Make like a special uh, landing page on the Ukrainian matter, like how you can like fast track Ukrainians to get the job online. If you are guys in the real estate, you know, like dedicate 10% for, for uh, like temporary housing for people who travel back and forth. I have a friend in Bratislava who has a hotel and part of his hotel is dedicated for Ukrainian refugees who can find the shelter for like three nights to, you know, to get shower, to take over and continue. So think of what you're already doing. Continue doing this with a slight shift, how it can help Ukraine. If you need more, ideas, feel free to approach me anytime. And obviously, this is the war not only about bullets, not only about tanks, this is also the war of information. So my job here is to spread the message, is to continue raising the awareness, to keep it fresh, to talk about this. Yes, and together with this event, I'm conducting many interviews from Singapore to Los Angeles, doesn't matter what is the time zone, I'm ready to wake up and talk and talk and talk. So if you have outreach to your audience, uh, I'll be happy to, to, to share my message uh, in your professional perspective, but also somehow related uh, to, to the war topic, because this is the mission uh, I actually uh, took. Uh, please subscribe all the English uh, channels or a Zoop, pretty easy to find me uh, anywhere because this is the, the, the message we have to continue talking about until, until guys, uh, the war uh, is finished. One thing important to always remember is uh, that event or the entire world is not only about Ukraine, right? People have their lives, they have some of their plans. Uh, I uh, kind of try simply elegantly to put the Ukrainian question on the topic to raise the awareness. However, there are other things that digital nomads talk about, which is travel, which is business, which is investing, which is a remote uh, work. So on uh, during the week that we are staying here, uh, all those topics are being raised, people exchange contacts, they do some common business ventures, uh, and obviously uh, think together how they can improve the world in all possible different manners.
actually I'm not the only one who is talking about Ukraine over here. Uh, there is uh, Johnny FD, he is American, also a pretty famous blogger on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe and see his channel. And he's also presenting his uh, projection on the events in Ukraine because he is living in our country for over than two years, having the property, and he also directly suffered from Russian invasion. So now we'll see a few of his comments from the stage on war in Ukraine. Are you ready? I'm ready. Ready as I can be. Good luck. Please, the Johnny Having the experience uh, of traveling as a minimalist digital nomad, sleeping kind of anywhere, not knowing what was next. Uh, but also the skills I learned building businesses, working online, marketing, networking, it saved, it saved me financially, physically, and mentally. I never really talked about this, but even though I'm you know, born and raised in San Francisco, I'm American, I have a US passport, I never really felt that comfortable there. Like I, I never really felt like I belonged, you know? Uh, I traveled a little bit in the US, but it was never a place that I can see myself really 100%, you know, fitting in like, fuck yeah, America, you know? And then there's no perfect country, but for me, it was just not a place that I saw myself living for the rest of my life and growing old. Uh, ironically, Ukraine was, and it's hard to explain for anyone who's never been there. And also, I'm sure it's not for everyone, but for me, it was kind of this perfect mix of the West and the East. There is a lot of, you know, talk on whose fault it was. Was it NATO expansion? Was it US meddling? Was, you know, was it the three, uh, you know, Nazis that just slipped through? It's, and all those discussions in peacetime, yeah, let's talk about that. I think it's important to talk about these things. But the clear fact is Russia invaded a peaceful country and they started killing everybody. They started killing civilians. They started killing kids doing things that are unimaginable. And if Russia had never attacked, none of this would have happened. I've been fundraising for them through my YouTube channel. I've been able to raise already $25,000 through a charity called Razam for Ukraine. Thank you. Because even though it's nice to donate to you know, these bigger charities, unfortunately, a lot of that money gets kind of mismanaged or it just takes a long time. I wanted to message every single person I knew that I ever met there, from the coffee shop person to my house cleaner to the person doing my floors and just say, do you need anything? And if I had any hesitation that they were, you know, that everything wasn't okay, I would just send them $500 or $1,000. And I did this through GoFundMe. And it still boggles my mind that this you know, community that has somehow built through you know, the digital nomad community, uh, as well as on YouTube, I've now raised $39,000 through here as well. <laughs> so I'm sure you know, most of us uh, in this room I've never learned uh, how to say anything in Ukrainian. Uh, but today, I want to share this phrase, Ukraina Primoze. Ukraina Primoze. Ukraina Primoze. Thank you. Okay. And, this phrase, I think it's, it's, it's important to learn uh, because unfortunately a lot of people in Ukraine think they're alone. They think no one cares about them. They think that, you know, they're just this kind of relatively small country in the hands of this you know, big bad tyrant who's just doing whatever they want. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of people in Ukraine, you know, still you know, don't speak English and they don't realize how supportive the world is. And they don't realize that the whole world wants them to have their freedom. They want them to have their lives. They want them to be able to return home safely. That's why I wanted to share this, this word and a message to 
stand with Ukraine. I'll be okay. I survived. Learning all these things, you know, throughout the years of being a nomad, even though I wanted to just, you know, not quit, but at least take a break and enjoy a new chapter in my life. This war has forced me to go back to being a minimalist digital nomad. And I'll get through it. So don't worry about me. Let's, let's stand with Ukraine. Thank you guys. And one uh, easy way we can do this is just taking a photo and just showing that we, from all around the world, 274 nomads are with Ukraine. Ukraina, Predemoje! Oh wow, that was like a powerful speech by Johnny. Amazing, I think he's gonna have the full version on his channel. But in the meantime, let's ask other participants of our event, what do they think about the events in Ukraine? Yesterday, Johnny had a powerful speech about the Ukraine. What can you tell about that? Well, um, for me, Johnny has been a big inspiration for my personal journey and a leader of this digital nomad movement for many years. Uh, and now seeing Johnny, how he takes uh, leadership, not just in living better life for us, but how he really stands for the country that is not in. He's not a native Ukrainian, right? Just a place that hosting, very inspiring. Um, you know, I think we all anonymously support Ukraine here. So it was really emotional and beautiful to see this. And I just wish him luck on, on his mission. And of course, I support him together with all the members here. Uh, thanks well, a lot. Uh, actually, uh, uh, we were driving here to Primustin together in the car the with Dean. Yeah. Yeah, it was a pleasure, we <laughs> yes. had some night nice talks. And uh, make sure to watch the other previous event in Dubrovnik where Dean had uh, like an amazing speech on the top of the, um, on the walls, of of the walls the right? City, Which was yeah, also yeah. very symbolic because it's not, not just the content, but also like this with a nice view, with the, like it's, it was the place of power, you would say, it right? It was very, very special. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed this. I love Dubrovnik and Croatia. And it's so powerful to sit on this top of the city, see the entire town, and you get a feel that's like you. Absolutely, you, it, you enjoy it. Like, like you get and this as I understand, view. this was like the rehearsal for your entry speech here, <laughs> and uh, there will be also guys on like uh, some experts in this video about like the most emotional part of your talk. That was, was like uh, the real kick off of our. It was a good one. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it was lovely. Good luck. Thanks, man. All right, I'll see you later. Ciao, guys. Yes, of course. Yes, everything good ever happened to me is the result of me saying yes. Nothing good ever happened to me is the result of saying no. I ask you, hike the mountain, dive the ocean, fly the skies, take that shot, drink that shot. <laughs> I have told today that this trip has nothing to do with recreation. However, there is something I simply cannot miss. Only one hour away from Primushten, there is a beautiful city of Split, which is actually the second largest city in Croatia. And there is something special about this. Look at this wall of the historical center. It might look much older than medieval times and the reason guys is that those are the ruins of impressive Diocletian palace he was one of the most uh, famous emperors of Roman Empire and since this is the part of Adriatic of greater Mediterranean era decided to make one of his residences on the Adriatic coast so basically we come inside into the old town and you can see that the buildings are simply built up inside the former huge palace. There are some columns over there, as you can see. Next to it, there is Venetian architecture type church. And very, very 
interesting typical Mediterranean feel. However, the fact that we are within the walls of a massive construction that is almost 2000 years old is simply mind-blowing. This impressive wall will definitely stand here for at least a few couple of centuries. The same, I am sure Ukraine will hold on for many, many years. And it's really inspiring to see how other Slavic country, which was on the edge of its existence sometime before, is doing pretty well. So for us, for Ukrainians, Croatia is true inspiration. Absolutely. And this passage is actually taking us out to the beachside promenade, sunny, people walking on the streets, enjoying their life, all the sorrow, all the, the hard years that Croatia had to go through in recent decade feels like long, long time ago. Only these walls probably still remember about them. And even here you can see how it is integrated. Check out the former walls. These are the modern buildings, some more new structures. And then the city is extending that way, facing opposite a nice harbor. As for me, guys, Split is one of the most beautiful Slavic cities on the beach side, actually. And somehow it is reminding me of Odessa, another beautiful town in south of Ukraine that is in a very difficult situation at the moment and it is serving as the main important strategic port, airport and generally a huge city with a population of over 1 million that is holding until Ukraine will win this war. I don't believe it! Hello! Oh, hello, my friend! <laughs> It's, it's unbelievable. Like simply you just walk on the street and you see I forgot your name, sorry. Sergey. Sorry, but I remember his according to the face and he was participating in one of my events in Lviv for online entrepreneurs and now we simply met like this in split on, on the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's you know, so the world is so small, so you never know where, when and where and whom you can meet. Well, what are you doing here? Yeah, actually, uh, my daughter is over there, so she, they, they have uh, the split community, they created uh, some kind of events for kids from Ukraine in this uh, time. Uh, so I'm just simply waiting for her uh, and uh, they're painting boats. <laughs> ah, so those are the kids who are painting over there, yeah, not yeah, what yeah. I've seen. Yeah. Wow, so, yeah. how is life? Ah, it's difficult, yeah, uh, you know, so this time it's it's for everyone, so you, lots of people are spread around the world in Ukraine, so my story is like, we left on February 22nd for a, a short uh, skiing vacation to Switzerland, and we got stuck here, and uh, I end uh, on 24, so I, when everything started. So we immediately switched, and switched to volunteering jobs, like to helping people in Ukraine. We, so we organizing communities here to to provide some money uh, for different funds. And then, then second or third day, then the big amount of refugees started coming over to Poland. So I was we, we moved back to Poland. So we started like helping them uh, to settle, to uh, meeting people on the border bringing them to Warsaw, like set, set, uh, finding locations for them, apartments. Yeah, and uh, for myself, yeah, so we've spent a few weeks in, in, in Warsaw and we were unable to find uh, an apartment, so, and uh, received information that there are some uh, free spaces still available here in, uh, in Croatia, so we moved here and then started like setting up things here. 
You see, so Ukrainians now are scattered all around Europe, but it's important that everybody is engaging in the war topics. Everybody is helping, everybody is contributing, and everybody is participating uh, the way they can uh, for our resistance and, of course, for the future victory. So I wish you good luck, my friend. Stay safe yeah. to your family. And I must say that uh, this is like a good place to be, in my opinion. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And Croatian people feel very close to Ukraine. Yeah, they're right? engaged because in 91 till 95 they had like kind of similar unfortunate events so they had a war here and lots of people nowadays so this is the generation which grew up in the similar conditions so they are very open and they try to help uh, that's why so they, they organize like lots of activities for kids uh, from refugees. Uh, okay so I wish you all the best and uh, looking forward to see you soon. Thank you. I just want to add something there are simply too many dots that are putting things together. Sergei, this guy, he visited one of my conferences back in Lviv a few years ago that were also connected to the digital nomad topic. And you see, and now I'm here on another digital nomad conference. Wow. So let's get back to it actually now. Charity event. Um, we already raised more than $2,250. Um, so guys, you can still donate if you missed it. Oris was talking about we are supporting a Ukraine orphanage. Um, here is the PayPal link behind me, but uh, we also have a box that will go around and please, if you have some cash, like everything goes to the kids. Uh, we would love to help them. They are kids from Western Ukraine who are safely managed to get to uh, to West Ukraine and now they are staying with the orphanage and they need a lot of supplies of course like food um, clothes also a van so every penny counts and if you can help please do so you can also use obviously the PayPal link so the main event is over but the donation process is ongoing let's hope we'll have a good project and actually th this guy just donated $1,000. Johnny FD, real ambassador of Ukraine. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So, Johnny, I yeah. hope together we'll visit the orphanage. Yeah, I will. I'd love to. I'd love to come to you guys. We'll make it happen. Okay, so it looks we are done. Yeah, we are done for tonight with the money collection. There Something is, is inside. There. Wow. Let's calculate, yes? Yeah, we're going to count it and then we're going to have the final number in Resolution. Here. Let's see, guys, what is the result. I hope it's a nice one and we'll manage to make a big impact with this. I'm super curious how much we were able to collect in cash. This is the box. There is something inside. So let's count and see what is the final result. This is Orest and currently I'm staying on the border between Poland and Ukraine, which is over there. And this is the van that we managed to buy together with your help, with Johnny and with my community as well. So this is made for kids especially. You can see we even have this kind of plate. The van is good and uh, yeah, it's spacious and there is even a passageway for, for wheelchairs you see and some even uh, <laughs> look uh, some some toys some bikes some presents for them so now this van is going to be going through the paperwork to be delivered to ukrainian side uh, and my uh, humanitarian mission trip is to be continued i'm traveling south to balkans maybe i'm going to meet johnny somewhere there but if not then we'll definitely uh, see each other in Ukraine hopefully very soon. The same guys, I invite you. Welcome to Ukraine. I'll do my best to put you in touch with everybody you need. And thanks again for uh, your donations because we did the first step to help the orphanage in Veliky Lubin, Lviv. We bought the van and I'm sure we're gonna continue supporting the kids in Ukraine. Stay safe and hope to see you somewhere in the world or at least virtually on my channel. Good luck!